Yeah, this balloon is not expanding by its own. It's a mine. <laughs> A mind is expanding that balloon. From nothing, nothing comes. In the Bible it says that God created the heavens and the universe. There is a God. And because there's a God, there's order in your life. There's order in your mind. There's order. This balloon is not expanding on its own. This balloon is not expanding on its own. It's expanding by my mind pouring into it. The universe is more complex than a balloon. And yet we're saying that the universe just expanded from nothing with no mind and became this beautiful world. That is crazy, that is crazy to believe that from nothing the universe just popped into existence. Now, we got a, 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 a pen. So get ready. Right? The big bang. Pop. Now. We're saying that the big bang theory does not make sense unless you have a mind behind the universe. If there is no mind behind the universe, how can the universe start to expand from nothing? How can the universe start to expand from nothing? It does not make sense. It says in the Bible, God created the world. And if God created the world, He created you. And if He created you, He wants to know you and he wants you to know him. He wants you to have a relationship. Now, I'll go home today. I'll go home today if you can show me how the universe came from nothing. If you can show me how the universe came from nothing, I'll go home. But nobody can. It needed a mind. This balloon is not expanding on its own. It's a mind that's blowing into it. It's a mind that's blown into that balloon. And in the universe, it did not expand by its own. It was a mind. God created this world. And he created this world for you to have a relationship with him. Now, God calls you today. He calls you to have a relationship with him. He doesn't want to condemn you. And he, he doesn't want to send you to hell. He doesn't want to send you to hell. In fact, he came and died on that cross. He came and gave his life on that cross. Can you explain to me, sir? Can you explain to me? See this balloon? Yeah? Right? I'll go home if you can explain to me. Imagine this is the universe. Yeah? Right? The universe is expanding, yeah? It was my mind that produced that expansion. Right? Without the mind, without anything, how's this balloon going to expand? How's the universe going to expand when there's no mind? Yeah, no, but a mind 
did it with the mouth, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is, in the universe, there was nothing and then suddenly it expanded. How did that work? How did that happen? Without a mind. Now, in the history of philosophy, right at the pre-Socratic philosophers argued, was it a mind or was it matter? And even today we have this debate, mind or matter. Now I say, and I respect to the people's opinion, I think it's more logical to believe a mind produced the universe. What do you think, bro? I believe a big man. Yeah? All right. But, but, all right, if you believe in the Big Bang, yeah? Right? Would you say that you have a mind? Yeah. Would you say you think logical? Yeah, right. So there was nothing there, there was no mind, there was no logic, and then suddenly the Big Bang happened, which is an expansion, and now we have mind. Now, here's my logic, right? From non-mind, we get non-mind. That's my logic, yeah? Non-mind produces non-mind. So how do you get Big Bang, non-mind, producing mind? How do you do that? I'm not trying to embarrass you, because this is a debate it, this debate is so powerful that an atheist called Anthony Flew, who was a famous atheist, the greatest atheist of the 20th century, he started to think, and in your body you've got DNA, and in your DNA is information. And he thought to himself, how can there be information in the DNA? Because there's information in a book, but how do you get information in the DNA? Somebody put information in the book, so somebody must have put information in the DNA. So you can only come to two conclusions. Either it was aliens or God. Anthony Flew said it's God. Now he did become a Christian, but he left his atheism and he believed in theism. Now what we're here today is saying that one day you're going to die. I, I don't know you. You're a nice guy. I really respect you, mate. You look an intelligent guy. You look a nice guy. He looks a nice guy. You're a nice guy. I know he's a nice guy. And you're a nice guy, yeah? And we're not out here to condemn you or to put you down. What we're trying to do here is to share the gospel about how you can have a relationship with God. Now one day, I don't know anything about you, but I know one day you're going to die. Right? All right. All right. Thanks. So one, one day you're going to die, yeah? And we want you to be prepared for death. But not only prepared for death, know how to live life today. God calls us to love. Jesus showed what love is. He sacrificed himself. When we see our, our soldiers in the army, they sacrifice themselves. That is love. When God, when you get married, God wants you to sacrifice yourself for your wife. Yeah? That's love. And he wants us to be more loving. But we're all, we're not as loving as we should be. So God wants to change us. But the first start is, if you had cancer, and I was your doctor, and you came to me, and I said to you, how are you doing mate, and never told you you had cancer, would I be a good doctor? Right? Would you, would you like me if I said nothing? You didn't, yeah. But if I said to you, I'm sorry mate, but you've got cancer, we've got to take you in the operation, you've got to cut it out now, sort it out, what would you think of me then? Yeah. A lot of people don't like preachers because preachers talk about sin, but sin's like a doctor pointing to someone who's got cancer, who has cancer. So the Ten Commandments, don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery, that's like a good doctor showing us what our hearts are really like. And when we look at the Ten Commandments, don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery, all these things, we, we see what we really like, but not what we, we put on a mask with everybody. But here's the point, God ain't gonna kick your butt. He came and got his book kicked for you. So when Jesus came and he lived that life and he was being whipped, he was being whipped for you. When he was nailed to the cross, he was being nailed for you. Now, he shed, he shed his blood for you so that you could be reconciled with God. All you've got to do is say, Fair cop, I, I have got a problem and I need forgiveness. And thank you Lord for dying for me when you come into my life. And if you do that, you'll be saved. Now, we're not anti-intellectual. I'm not anti-intellectual. I have a degree from Manchester University in theology. I've studied at MA. I've studied postmodern philosophy. So what about Islam? I respect Muslims. What about atheism? Atheism and Islam, let's look at those. Not, I'm not knocking them, but intellectually, as, as say, imagine I was debating a Muslim apologist or an atheist apologist. The atheist said, I don't agree with your Bible. It's full of immoral things. Yeah? 
It's got violence in it, murders and all that. I said to the atheist, do you believe in evolution? They say, yeah. Where does it tell you in evolution what is right and wrong? It's the survival of the fittest. So you're invoking the golden rule, we should love each other, to attack Christianity, but you can't give an intellectual foundation from evolution for the golden rule. You're actually borrowing from religion. So atheism doesn't work. Another way of defeating atheism is logic. Atheists say science, science, science. But science is based on logic. Logic is immaterial. Atheists, not all of them, are materialists. All that exists is the material. So how do you get logic in the, that's immaterial in the material world? Why is it logic works everywhere around here now? If I stand on that tree and fall, I'll break my neck. That's logic. I can logically deduce. Why does logic work? Because there's a mind outside us that has given us logic in nature so we can find things out. Now the atheist believes most of them, not all of them, because you got it, you can't straw man all atheists, but most atheists are materialists, scientific materialists. All that we know is the material. But logic's immaterial. We believe in an immaterial God, and so we can account for immaterial logic. Now the Muslim says, no, 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 Jesus isn't, isn't uh, Christianity is not right, Islam is right. We're not knocking Islam, but let's look at it intellectually. Uh, the Quran says Jesus did not die on the cross, right? The Bible says Jesus died on the cross. Now, Muhammad came 600 years after Jesus. He never knew Jesus, he never knew any of his followers, right? Those who said he died on the cross were Jesus' followers, eyewitnesses. Luke says he got his eyewitnesses. Uh, John is an eyewitness, Matthew is an eyewitness, yeah? Not only that, we have Josephus, an enemy of Jesus, who lived in the area of Jesus, not long after Jesus, said Jesus died on the, on, on the cross. And we have a Roman historian who lived not long after Jesus, uh, uh, Tetus, said Jesus died. Now here's the point. We have two enemies who lived near the time of Jesus, said Jesus died on a cross. And we have eyewitnesses. So who are you going to believe? The eyewitnesses and the enemies of Jesus who lived 34 years after Jesus, or someone 600 years after Jesus who never even knew Jesus or his followers? Which is the one that is most likely correct? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay. All right. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.